most corrupt presidents exposed. Corruption seems to be an endemic evil in many parts of the world, often intertwined with dictatorship, human rights violations, and politically motivated assassinations. Democracies are frequently insulted for the freedoms they offer that can enable theft, but corruption is often greater and more sustained over time in dictatorships. Simply put, these regimes lack checks and balances, and their leaders enjoy total impunity to appropriate public money and resources. Despite governmental corruption being a widespread phenomenon in Latin America and Africa, these two regions don't hold a monopoly on it. We can also find corrupt leaders in the United States and Europe. This is why in today's video we'll be presenting the 15 most corrupt presidents in history. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to stay updated with our latest content. Robert Mugabe, the King of Corruption in Africa Robert Mugabe ruled Zimbabwe, formerly known as Rhodesia, for decades, and his name became synonymous with corruption in Africa. Born in 1924, he started as a teacher before entering politics, co-founding the Zimbabwe African National Union and leading the guerrilla movement against the white minority regime. After Zimbabwe's independence in 1980, Mugabe became prime minister and soon after president where he consolidated a regime of absolute control. In 1987, he formally assumed the presidency. However, the elections were mere facades marked by fraud and repression. In 2000, he implemented a massive land seizure from white landowners, destroying the country's economy. Despite judicial orders to stop the expropriations, Mugabe maintained his power through corruption and repression. Ultimately, after fraudulent elections in 2013 and a military coup in 2017, Mugabe retired with a multi-million dollar pension and lived in luxury until his death in 2019. Mohamed Suharto, the Indonesian dictator who accumulated billions. Mohamed Suharto, president of Indonesia from 1968, was so corrupt that in 2004, he topped the global corruption ranking. During his rule, Suharto built an unstoppable network of corruption that allowed him and his inner circle to accumulate billions of dollars. The Indonesian government was centralized, militarized, and controlled by his family and allies. Every major business in Indonesia had to include a partner from Suharto's family, who took most of the profits without contributing capital. His son, Sigit Harto, received a 20% stake in the privatization of Jakarta's water company. Suharto also created charitable entities, such as the Yasans, which received large sums of money from companies only to feed his corrupt network. It is estimated that during his 31 years in power, Suharto accumulated a fortune of $35 billion. In 1998, after massive unrest and military pressure, Suharto resigned. He died in 2008, leaving behind a legacy of corruption and abuse of power. Richard Nixon, the most corrupt president in U.S. history. Richard Nixon, born in 1913 in California, went down in history not only as a political leader but also as the most corrupt U.S. president. After serving as a lawyer, a naval reserve officer in World War II, and rising rapidly in politics, Nixon became president in 1968. But it was the Watergate scandal in 1972 that uncovered his greatest scandal and ended his career. It all started when five men were caught breaking into the Democratic Party's offices in the Watergate complex. This simple fact led to a series of investigations revealing a web of political espionage and illegal payments orchestrated by the White House to sabotage the opposition. Nixon initially denied his involvement and was re-elected in November 1972. However, the relentless work of journalists, especially from the Washington Post, and the mysterious informant Deep Throat, later revealed as Mark Felt, former deputy director of the FBI, started revealing the truth. As the investigations advanced, Nixon got trapped in his lies. The White House tried to erase a crucial 18-minute tape, but it was too late. In 1974, facing the inevitability of impeachment, Nixon chose to resign, becoming the only president in U.S. history to do so. Ferdinand Marcos, the Filipino dictator and his million-dollar theft. Ferdinand Marcos ruled the Philippines from 1965 to 1986, and his name is still remembered for corruption and abuse of power. In 1972, he declared martial law, which allowed him to consolidate a power network backed by his wife, Imelda Marcos, famous for her extravagant tastes. 
Imelda owned more than 3,000 pairs of shoes and an impressive collection of mansions even in Manhattan. Together, Marcos and Imelda created a system of crony capitalism, where the country's most lucrative businesses were controlled by their friends, family, and frontmen. The Philippine government, strengthened by the military, silenced any criticism. They seized the media, imprisoned opponents, and hid the massive theft of public money. In 1983, the assassination of Benigno Aquino, an opposition leader returning to the country, sparked international outrage. In 1986, Aquino's widow, Corazon Aquino, defeated Marcos in an election that Marcos tried to discredit. Tensions erupted into massive protests that forced the Marcos family to flee to Hawaii. Later, it was revealed that Ferdinand Marcos had stolen billions of dollars during his long rule. Despite efforts to prosecute him, Marcos died in 1989 before the judicial process was completed. Jose Lopez Portillo, the president who led Mexico to waste and corruption. Jose Lopez Portillo was president of Mexico from 1976 to 1982, and his term was marked by great economic expansion followed by a devastating crisis. During the oil boom of the 70s, Mexico enjoyed large revenues, but the fall of oil prices in 1981 triggered an economic crisis that dismantled the country's prosperity. However, what truly defined his government were corruption, waste, and frivolity. Although corruption had already been a problem in Mexico, under Lopez Portillo's administration, it reached alarming levels. During his term, his family, friends, and lovers greatly benefited from the power, and his son, Jose Ramon, became a symbol of nepotism. In fact, Lopez Portillo even called his son the pride of my nepotism. One of the darkest figures in his government was Arturo El Negro Durazo, who became head of the Mexico City Police. Lopez Portillo illegally promoted him to general, and Durazo became a feared figure due to his absolute power. In an act of egotism, Lopez Portillo declared that his administration represented the last opportunity of the revolution to solve the country's problems, a comment reflecting his immense arrogance and the deep disconnect with Mexico's reality. Nicolas Fouquet, the man who controlled France's finances until his fall. Nicolas Fouquet was not president. But during his time as superintendent of finances under King Louis XIV, he controlled France's finances as if he were the country's absolute leader. Educated by the Jesuits, Fouquet began his career as a lawyer and quickly rose in the court, becoming the king's superintendent of finances from 1653 to 1661. In these roles, he exploited France's financial chaos to enrich himself at an incredible speed. During a period of economic disorder, fraud was common and government financiers received great favors and large sums of money, which allowed Fouquet to amass a fortune. His power was so great that even Prime Minister Cardinal Mazarin appeared as his subordinate. Mazarin, also involved in the web of corruption, could not stop Fouquet. However, Louis XIV, tired of Fouquet's extravagant spending and growing power, eventually took action. Fouquet had acquired luxurious properties, including the Belon Port and a castle in Amboise, and the king could no longer allow such ostentation. In 1661, Louis XIV ordered Fouquet's arrest, and he was tried and sentenced to life imprisonment in the Pignerol Fortress in the Alps. Although his death was reported in 1680, his death certificate was never found, and his friend, writer Jean de La Fontaine, suggested that Fouquet had been poisoned. Fidel Castro, the revolutionary leader and his hidden life of luxury. Fidel Castro dedicated his life to denouncing the inequalities of capitalism, wealth, and luxury. However, according to one of his closest bodyguards, his private life was the complete opposite. Juan Reynaldo Sanchez, who served Castro and escaped Cuba in 2008, revealed that the Cuban leader enjoyed a life of luxury with more than 20 residences, a private island in the Bay of Pigs, a floating restaurant, and even a private marina with yachts, fishing boats, and over 100 employees to take care of his properties. Contrary to his austere image, Sanchez asserts that Castro never gave up on capitalist comforts and lived like an unlimited capitalist. Despite receiving an official salary of $36 a month, Forbes included him in 2006 among the richest dictators in the world, with a fortune hidden from public view. Was the leader who fought against capitalism actually one of its greatest beneficiaries?
Rafael Leonidas Trujillo, the dictator who made the Dominican Republic his property. Rafael Leonidas Trujillo ruled the Dominican Republic for 30 years, from 1930 to 1961, turning the country into his personal fiefdom. Nicknamed Chapita for his love of decorations, Trujillo not only controlled the government but also the country's most lucrative businesses, ensuring no one could compete with him. During his bloody tyranny, thousands of opponents were murdered in what seemed like accidents. Trujillo became the largest landowner in the nation, with total control over the economy. Although his government brought some economic growth, the benefits were limited to his inner circle, including his family. Supported by the United States due to his anti-communism, Trujillo eventually became a thorn in the side of the U.S. government, especially after attempting to assassinate Venezuelan President Romulo Betancourt and ordering the brutal execution of the Mirabal sisters, opposition activists. On May 30, 1961, Trujillo was assassinated in an ambush organized by an opposition command with weapons supplied by the CIA. Ironically, his corrupt reign ended with his own violent death. Nikolai Ceausescu, the dictator who amassed a fortune but could not enjoy it. Nikolai Ceausescu, the socialist dictator of Romania from 1967 to 1989, is known for his oppressive regime and personality cult, but also for his incredible hidden fortune of $1 billion abroad. However, he was never able to enjoy his wealth, as he was captured while trying to flee the country after the collapse of his government. Ceausescu started his life as a poor child in a Romanian village working in factories from the age of 11. At 14, he joined the illegal Romanian Communist Party, and after several arrests, he quickly rose within the regime. In 1967, he ascended to power as president of the state council and became dictator, centralizing power and fostering enormous personal devotion. His regime, characterized by repression and censorship, eventually faced strong popular opposition. In December 1989, riots broke out across the country, and Sosescu, Facing the fury of the people, ordered troops to fire on the protesters. However, the protests could not be suppressed, and his government was overthrown. Ceausescu and his wife Elena were captured while trying to flee the country. In a hasty two-hour trial, broadcast live on television, they were sentenced to death and executed on December 25, 1989. What happens when a dictator loses control of his own fate? Number 10, Francois Duvalier, the Voodoo Dictator. Francois Duvalier, known as Papa Doc, was dictator of Haiti from 1957 to 1971. His government was characterized by a sinister mix of political repression, murder, and the use of witchcraft to maintain control over an impoverished population. Interestingly, this tyrant began his life as a poor child from a farming family but distinguished himself as a doctor, fighting diseases like typhus and malaria, which earned him popularity among his fellow countrymen. In 1957, Duvalier rose to power after an election in which he promoted the exaltation of blackness, earning the enmity of the mulatto elites. As he consolidated his power, he used voodoo as a political tool, proclaiming himself as an ogun or shaman, and exploited the poverty of his nation to steal the country's resources. In 1958, he signed a protection agreement with the Dominican dictator Rafael Trujillo, and in 1959 he founded the feared paramilitary organization Tonton Macau. Throughout his term, he enriched himself by appropriating international aid and maintaining absolute control over the country. In 1964, he declared himself president for life and manipulated the constitution so that his son, Jean-Claude, would succeed him upon his death. Duvalier passed away in 1971, leaving power to his son, who continued his legacy of corruption and authoritarianism. His reign is remembered for its brutality and the manipulation of voodoo to instill fear in the population. Number 11. Carlos Salinas de Gortari, the man behind the privatizations. Carlos Salinas de Gortari, president of Mexico from 1988 to 1994, implemented a series of liberal economic reforms that transformed the country but his administration was also marked by major corruption scandals. During his government, there was massive privatization of state-owned companies and banks, a process that led to one of the largest transfers of assets from the public to the private sector. However, these privatizations were marred by corruption and favoritism, sparking criticism of his administration. 
In 1995, his brother, Raul Salinas de Gortari, was arrested for corruption, tax evasion, and links to drug trafficking, which tarnished the former president's image. During his term, the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, was also signed, marking a milestone for the Mexican economy. Number 12. Miguel Juarez Selman, The Corruption of a Liberal President Miguel Juarez Selman was president of Argentina from 1886 to 1890. Known for his authoritarian regime and close ties with large businesses, Juarez Selman was accused of running a government marked by corruption. His liberal economic policies, which allowed private banks to issue their own currency, caused uncontrolled inflation and led to an economic crisis. Juarez Selman's Unicado, as his government was known, was characterized by a lack of control over private interests, leading to a strong concentration of power and increased social inequality. In 1890, his government collapsed due to the economic crisis, and he was replaced by Carlos Pellegrini. Thirteen, Antonio Guzman Blanco, the thief of the loans. Antonio Guzman Blanco was president of Venezuela during several terms between 1870 and 1888. This leader, a relative of Simon Bolivar, focused on consolidating his personal power and enriching himself by stealing large sums through the international loans he took out to finance his government. Guzman Blanco, who referred to himself as the illustrious American, took advantage of his trips to Europe to live luxuriously and engage in fraudulent business practices, earning him the nickname the Thief of Loans due to his corrupt behavior. 14. Mobutu Sese Seko, the Dictator of Zaire Mobutu Sese Seko was president of Zaire, now the Democratic Republic of Congo, from 1965 to 1997. Known for his image as an all-powerful warrior, Mobutu concentrated all power in his hands and took control of the national economy, amassing a personal fortune estimated at billions of dollars, hidden in Swiss banks. His government was characterized by a military dictatorship supported by the United States during the Cold War, and his regime was marked by massive corruption. Despite Mobutu's personal wealth, Zaire was left devastated, with an external debt that plunged the country into poverty. 15. Sani Abacha, the dictator who died from an overdose. Sani Abacha was president of Nigeria from 1993 to 1998, a period marked by corruption and political repression. Abacha amassed a fortune through bribes paid by oil multinationals in exchange for exploitation rights of Nigeria's resources. After his death in 1998, it was revealed that his fortune amounted to around $4 billion abroad. However, his death was shrouded in controversy, as rumors circulated that he had died of a heart attack after overdosing on Viagra while trying to maintain his health with sex workers. These dictators not only left a legacy of suffering in their countries, but also amassed great wealth at the expense of the people. 16. Hello Time Voyagers friends! If you enjoyed the content, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue creating exciting videos. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We genuinely welcome your comments and love hearing your thoughts. A big hug to all our followers and a heartfelt thank you to our troops and officials for their invaluable support. We appreciate you being here.